friends and welcome back to my channel Micah here I know long time no see I feel like I haven't talked to YouTube since like October and though I've recorded a lot of footage that I've been sort of hoarding on my phone I haven't really made a sit down talky video and that's because I've been very busy with Café con Leche my goal for year two of the musical writing process was always to have a production of the show. Either it was going to be a virtual experience, but said I got something that I couldn't have ever imagined when I started writing it. And it was a performance, actually two of them. But before we get ahead of ourselves, hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Micah Vidal. I'm a musical theater writer and welcome back to my channel. I know I have been gone so freaking long. Like I don't even know how long at this point. I think the last time I posted a video in which I talked directly to you was in October. I mean, yes, I've been vlogging on TikTok and I think a lot of that has come from working on the musical and not having time to edit. But now that the madness that was January through March has kind of cooled down, I've decided to sort of catch us up on where things are, the development of Café con Leche, my work with the Latin A Lab, which is this video. And I'm just going to take you through the timeline of this whole thing. Before we get started, I highly recommend you treat this video as a podcast. It's been a while since we've caught up. So, you know, get a snack, get a drink, put me in the background while you're doing some chores, folding some laundry, because I'm really going to get into this theater experience. Let's jump into it. So first of all, what is Café con Leche? If you are new to my channel or you stumbled upon this, how did you find me? Café con Leche is the original musical that I have been working on and sharing here on YouTube for the last two-ish years. It'll be two years of working on the show in May. I have been chronicling the entire process online through this vlog series that I have here. And while I've moved between YouTube and TikTok, it's always been about the show. Now, this is something that I have developed thoroughly online. If you've attended my streams or anything like that, you know that I have outlined and drafted this to literal hell. I obviously don't expect you to go back and watch two years worth of progress vlogs, but you can if you want to. They are there. I completed my first draft of this musical in January of 2022. I wrote it in a month and it is terrible, but there is a draft out there that will never see the light of day. And slowly, as I have been working on it this last year and doing some side quests, working on my second musical, which you can watch my virtual production story of that up here. In December, I sort of finalized my outline for the first time. I would end up finalizing it one more time, actually. That's all to say that my dreams and goals for Café con Leche this year were pretty big and working with the Latine Lab really helped me do that. So before we jump into sort of my experience with the lab, most of you probably don't know the musical theater lab that I'm referencing. So here's a little segment about the Latine Lab. The Latine Musical Theater Lab is an organization that develops and advocates for new Latine written. Latine being, of course, the gender neutral term of Latino or Latina or Latin, advocates for new Latine written work of musical theater in order to radically change who gets to tell musical stories on stages across the country. So so as a Latina musical theater writer and really a musical theater writer in general, we're kind of a niche writing group already, but especially among Latine, Latino, Latina people like myself, there aren't that many of us. I bet you the only one that you can name right now from the top of your head is Lin-Manuel Miranda. And so while Lin-Manuel Miranda, who is an icon and a great inspiration, has sort of taken over Broadway, it's really only one show. And Hamilton is sort of an American show with Into Heights really being sort of the only and premier show about Latinos on Broadway or really any major musical. And so the Latine Lab is changing that. So I was very fortunate to be with the lab. I signed up for the newsletter, but actually did not feel that I was at the level to actually sign up to be a writer at the lab. It's something that I struggle with, this deep sense of imposter syndrome that comes from the fact that I don't like have real quote unquote training. I have a mentorship with John, which I've talked about intensely and deeply here on this channel, but I don't really have this sort of 
pedigree that a lot of other people who write musicals have. I don't even really have a bachelor's in music if we're being honest. So I think that for those reasons, I didn't want to sign up for the lab. And then I was following them on Instagram. They saw my Instagram page and they were like, you write musicals, you should 100% register for this. And so it was through their love and support that I actually signed up to be a writer in the first place and that this opportunity came into my mailbox. So now that we've talked a little bit about the lab, let's talk about the actual event that I submitted for, which is for by Latine. Also, the light is just moving, moving, attacking me, washing me out. <laughs> the clouds of Syracuse, they came to protect me now. <laughs> The light has shifted. So for by Latine is this really, really cool program where they perform 15 minute experts of four new original musicals written by a Latine writing team. Either, you know, they have to have one member of the team who is Latine and then those shows get produced. They get sort of their 15 minutes in front of a paying audience and also rehearsal time, music director, directing, just the whole thing but for 15 minutes of the show. And it can be anything from a finished show to, you know, Café con Leche, which is a work in progress and is actively being written right now. There are a multitude of reasons why I wanted to apply to this, but primarily I felt that it was my goal this year to have a production before May 2023, which would be the two year anniversary of the beginning of writing this show. But more importantly, because the lab is located in New York City and I currently reside in Syracuse and we'll be moving again during the summer, I wanted to be able to experience what it would be like to work with professionals that are in the city. <laughs> As someone from LA, I am a strong believer in LA theater and everything that it represents, but unfortunately it just doesn't have the same resources that New York theater does. And so it was really imperative that if I applied to this, I would be able to do the March one. Now, all that to say that of course there are requirements for applying. And so real quick here, let's talk about the requirements. They required an excerpt of the show. And if you know from what I've talked about of working on the show, I didn't really have a functioning excerpt. I have a draft. I had a couple of songs that I haven't publicly shared because they are still works in progress and I don't want people getting enamored with a song that I would eventually cut one day or extend or completely change. And I needed to create a functioning excerpt if I wanted to submit to this. It's a good adage in theater that a page is about a minute of stage time. And so 15 minutes on the dot would be 15 pages. So I needed to write 15 pages. <laughs> really two to three songs is what they wanted. And then also they needed demos of of the songs. Luckily, they did not require lead sheets or scores, which was something that I would not have been able to provide in the time allotted when I discovered that this was a possibility. All submitted by the 20th at noon. <laughs> Now you can definitely go back and watch the vlogs to see me react to this in real time. But I figure now that you know, I do want to talk about the timeline because the timeline was very fast and very intense. And I would like to add, even though I'm not going to go into detail here, the fact that I was applying to grad school at the same time. Surprise, your girl is in a crisis, but yes, I was applying to NYU at the same time. And so both of those things were sort of synchronous and really affecting one another. You know, put a little, a little pin in that because I will be making a video about the entire grad school application process. So, <laughs> The timeline is so intense and it recently finished. I'm recording this video on the 29th of March and I was actively working on this up until the 13th. So it's like a lot, a lot. The sun keeps attacking me. So I keep having to move further and further back. So I am sorry about that, but there's literally nothing I can do. Anyway, timeline. I'm gonna have to actually reference my little memo book here. So the email from the lab that they were accepting applications was sent out on the 9th of January. That is when I found out that this was even an option for me or a possibility. And this is the first time I've sort of heard of what for by Latine was. I would like to add here that the Latine lab is only 16 months old. So it is sort of this new thing that is being created in New York theater to bring marginalized voices, but particularly Latino voices into the fray. We are quite a big part of the US population, but a very, very minuscule part of like the theater population. And so with the lab's help, we're hoping to change that. But yeah, it was sent out on the 9th. I had a meeting with John 
in between that time, I think it was on the 10th, and I talked to him about deciding if we wanted to submit the show for this. In this situation, I've learned that people have excerpts ready to go for their shows, as I'm still sort of this baby musical theater writer with a lot of writing experience but not a lot of material finished yet in terms of like other writers it's moments like this that i'm so thankful for john and his experience there's just so much that he innately knows that i just haven't been exposed to yet and in those situations he's just who I ask and as my mentor I guess that's sort of the point of having one. We talked about it and we discussed sort of what I was thinking as the excerpt, what were the songs that I had done and what did I feel that scenes were salvageable that I could write in a week and sort of put together. In that moment I decided that I was going to write the show. And if you look at my vlogs for January that I made the decision to write on the 12th sort of the 12th was when I said it on the vlog, but I think it was the 11th after lessons that I was like, yes, this is something that I'm going to do. I felt that it was important for a twofold thing to write this in a week because it is due on the 20th, as I mentioned earlier. The first is that at the time I was applying to a very rigorous musical theater writing program, really the only one in the States. And I wanted to know that I would be able to pump out this type of material in a week because ultimately that is what they expect at the grad school level. And so I thought, okay, this is going to be a good extra exercise and seeing how much I can do in the allotted time frame revisions and all and this is literally just like writing the libretto recording the demos laying them down tracking them all of that from start to finish and I really wanted to know if I could do that I've been writing for two years I've been taking lessons for two years it was sort of putting everything to the test and the second reason that I decided to do it was again to give Café Con Leche the chance to be something I went through a very deep submission period in my first year and I got rejected everywhere and as you guys know I got rejected by BMI and so this was sort of me after taking a couple of months off and doing a lot of like self-producing and independent work to sort of rev up the submission process again. I decided to do it. And so then I literally had nine days, really it's eight and a half days because it was due at noon to submit. During this time, I decided for those of you who are in the know about the show or who have heard the songs, I wanted to take Show Some Restraint, which is the first song that I wrote for the show and turn that into the scene that it needed to be. I really felt that that was sort of the middle beat of the 15 pages and so I needed to write the setup into the meet cute because Show Some Restraint is Natalie, Alejandra's best friend's reaction to Alejandra's meet cute with Megan and then ultimately after that it would also be the love song, the first love song rather, between Megan and Alejandra. That would be this new song that I would be writing for this excerpt. In the process of writing these 15 pages I came to a lot of realizations. The first is that Show Some Restraint turned into Baby You're Gay. It is the fourth time that I've done a major rewrite of the song lyrically, but the first time that I've changed the actual title and the approach of the song, the content and reaction is pretty similar, but obviously the subject matter is pretty straightforward because I don't want the audience to sort of guess that the meet cute happened between Megan and Alejandra. I want it to be very obvious that these are two queer women who are having this golden age musical meet cute. And that's kind of playing with the form of that. I would say that I'm a very fast book writer. So I knew the scene structure pretty early on in the drafting process, but it was drafting the songs that took the longest amount of time. Superstition was a song that I wrote as a solo originally, always with the intention to have it be a duet. And I ended up lyrically reworking that song all the way until final, final music was done. I wrote every day, so many long hours. If you were at the streams, you know, if you saw the TikTok vlogs, you know, and I ended up submitting literally six minutes before it was due. And like I stayed up all night. I woke up at five in the morning and laid every single demo down that morning. Like that, that was literally, it was just a rush to the finish for this because I wanted to give Café Con Leche its best chance. And in a way, I do feel like I have to be honest about that because I don't really work like other writers do in the space. I feel like a lot of other writers tend to write drafts and I'm definitely a 
plotter through and through and so it's very rare that I'm writing without a very strict outline and because I haven't had a strict outline for the last couple of years that I've been working on this I've refused to write anything after that first dismal draft that's why I think this is such a big deal and why I'm taking the time to explain this all right so now that the writing thing is over let's talk about pre-production so pre-production starts I submit it on the 20th I find out on the 31st that Café con Niche's excerpt was selected to be performed. Whew, it felt like a dream and it felt like a mistake. So I met with the lab and with Ryan that day to be like, hey, is this for real? You know, the imposter syndrome was really, really kicking in. And Ryan, who is an amazing, amazing, amazing person and who is sort of the founder and creator of this was like, so you think I made a mistake? And, you know, in that moment, it's like, no, 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 I really want to do this. And so he's like, okay, well, then just do it. It's those little things that have helped more than anything else. It's these people who are complete strangers, or at least they were at the time, really loving the work enough to select you and even understanding that because of the process that it's at, it's at early stages and still being like, yes, you are writing at a level that is worthy to be performed and seen. I mean, it's incredible. So I get selected on the 31st, which is one day before my NYU application was due. If I didn't get selected, I internally felt that I wouldn't be submitting to NYU because I just wasn't ready to play at the big leagues. But because I got in, I actually submitted. So it ended up being this boon that allowed me to feel confident enough in my work to submit to such a really the only institution who is teaching at this level. Then I went to LA from the 4th to the 13th of February. I was there to do some family stuff because I live in New York and you know, my life doesn't stop being in California because I'm from there, my family's there. But during that time, I still had lots to do and work on with the lab. I had a meeting with the lab team on the 8th and that's when I met the entire board and I sort of talked about my vision for this piece. I've always said that this piece is sort of my attempt to write an LA version, a queer version of In the Heights. It's not that I'm looking to write like In the Heights, but it's the only Latin show out there and I want to write the second one. <laughs> Got to share with them my vision and what I would need which at that point was I very much needed a copyist because I didn't have sheet music for my actors to learn the songs and I didn't have transcriptions or lead sheets. Then I met with John in the morning of the 10th to sort of talk about the excerpt. I submitted without him reading the excerpt. I felt pretty confident that I would be able to sort of work through it on my own after the previous lesson to kind of map out what we thought it should be or rather what I thought it was and him giving me feedback. Okay, <laughs> I have to move again because the sun is hitting my eye and I'm going blind. You know, we're casual now. Anyway, he suggested, I think superstition should be a duet, which is what I'd always intended, but I didn't have time to flesh it out. So I really fleshed out this really moving solo for Alejandra. In musical theater, if you don't really know how to write a musical, you write a lot of solo songs. It's kind of a telltale sign of a new writer. And as someone who has actively tried to work against that perception, I knew that I wanted this 15 minutes to show the quality and the caliber of my writing. And so in that moment, I decided that I was going to rewrite Superstition to be a duet and really commit to what I wanted it to be. I sort of had settled with the excerpt that I sent over, not only because of time constraints, but also because I realized that, hey, like obviously people are gonna know that this is a work in progress and I'm fine with people seeing that. And I think settling limits the art form and John being like, so you're happy with this? You're gonna just settle when you know you could push more, you could do more. I felt very motivated by that and I decided to do it. I didn't want to sell myself short. If this was the only time that Café con Leche got a performance, I wanted people to look and listen and be like, yes, this is how Maigo writes and whether they like it or not is not up to me. I have to like it. I didn't do an excerpt in that style where I was like, okay, I'm gonna include a little bit of each song. Like, nope, here are three scenes from the show, scenes like five through seven, and those are gonna be scenes that are going to be in there. And I wanted them to be at the level of like, okay, if we were going to perform act one of this musical or the whole thing, you would be seeing these scenes on stage. Maybe I'm too hard on myself, 
but I, I don't care. <laughs> then I have my first meeting with Angela, I'm just the most amazing music director. Angela Ortiz is literally who I want to be. I wish I were as talented and as musical as her. I will be linking everyone's websites and the Latin A Lab and all that stuff below. But my God, I think music as like a glittering chandelier, or I really think this should feel like the ocean, that she was able to take those feelings and be like, yes, I totally understand what you mean. And then hearing the demos back and being like, wow, you really do understand what I mean amazing she also wrote the harmonies for this which was great because again another thing that i don't have to worry about i do find the writing and notation and harmony of writing a song to be sort of drab might come from the insecurity of the lag of having a music degree so i met with angela and she was like okay final music and final libretto the first time are due on the 15th at this point we are less than a month out from performance so there really isn't a lot of time to change things during the meeting with the team and the board of the lab i was told that i could change you know lines right up until performance day which was not what they meant <laughs> What they meant was like, you know, you can change a word here and there. But as someone who's never done this process before, I was like, oh, you mean I can do a third pass at all these words to make sure that they're perfect? Love that. That is not what they meant. But I didn't know that. So yeah, the final music got submitted on the 15th and I wasn't going to make any more changes. I thought. Then a week after that, I had some time to sort of relax and be like, okay, this is done. I had the chance to meet with my director for the first time, Emmy Lerman. What an incredible woman. The Argentinian to my Chilean, our relationship and our collaboration will stop the South American wars from happening. What an incredibly talented director. In the room, she brought out stuff that I subtextually written to the forefront. And I was like, I did mean that. And she picked that up, I had no idea. It's like bringing new definition to the work that just isn't there on paper. It's incredible. Anyway, so I met with Emmy and I was like, hey, I'm doing another pass because the final, final excerpt would be due on the 28th. And again, that feeling of like, you can change a word here and there. And then I took it to be, oh, Micah can do a full rewrite of these lyrics to make sure that she's squeezing as much information in there. And I wouldn't say I'm an overwriter, but I'm definitely like an over planner, over rewriter. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daniel and the cast. I'm a, I'm a wordy person. I mean, this video is kind of long. You should know that by now. I submitted the final excerpt on the 28th. There is this whole thing about the fact that it should have already been in there. And you know, the thing about working with a living, breathing piece of theater is that it's going to live and breathe and, you know, confuse things. Everything ended up working out. But I will say that now that I know what it means, like this is, has to be performance and it was performance ready when I submitted it. I took this sort of be a workshop experience, which is a bit of a different thing in theater. In workshop, you're actively working with new drafts and new lines. When you are trying to do a performance, you're trying to make sure that your actors look the best. So in that moment, I had to sort of let go because of the limits of a 15 minute excerpt of five hours of rehearsal and of the fact that this is, you know, a bare bones performance of the piece. It's just the little things like that, that you learn. This is sort of my first experience with this and I hope that there'll be more, but you know, this is the only one. I think it's been an absolutely pivotal experience. Then I'm heading to New York. There was a whole issue with me getting into the city. The Greyhound didn't work. I had to get a last minute ticket and fly in. In and I couldn't take it just but the point is is that I was there for rehearsals again five hours total that's it that these actors had to learn my wordy very wordy 15 minute script and I was going to be in rehearsals on March 6th and March 9th rehearsal and here I'll include some pictures as I've been including throughout this whole thing but like what an incredible experience the first time I heard our Alejandra sing superstition I literally started crying in the theater. It's one of those moments where I remember watching the Sondheim 80th celebration and every time, you know, Sunday would play or like people would sing his songs, he'd laugh and he'd cry. But it's not so much about finding your own work funny. It's more about the fact that here, here is an experienced professional, right? Here are our paid actors 
who are great at their craft, who are also Latino. Like my entire cast was all women and non-binary folk, which was exactly how I envisioned my piece. They all looked different, different shades of what Latino is because we don't all look like me. Like there's Afro-Latino and Asian Latino and you know, there's just, there's just an endless slew of, of us. And that's what my cast looked like. And I heard Alejandra sing and I cried because my God, how incredible bizarre moving thing to hear someone you have never literally never met in your fucking life understand what you have written on the page and bring that to life i mean thinking about it now i want to cry she sang that part with the grief that i had written it and to hear that as an interpretation of the work i mean what an incredible incredibly moving experience the thing about the rehearsal process and this is why i think now my desire for cafe con leche's next steps which we'll get to are a reading a full reading of the show and then a workshop is that seeing these actors work with the material was the most inspiring thing in the writing process i wrote the first 15 pages or rather rewrote the first 15 pages of the show during this time i actually ended up rewriting them and have been rewriting them again because like i said i always think that i can push myself to write better but they informed so much of what the show needed these actors would come up to me and ask me what about this what about this what motivates this and something that i may have been foggy about before ended up being so succinct and also answered in my head through their questions and again i cannot stop talking about emmy what an incredible incredible director to just take this piece and make it feel just fully formed and done even though it was just an excerpt and also to ask me what i meant what is this what is that and in the room being like no how about this and adding her own vision to the piece and making it better than I could have imagined within sort of the writer limits. And then we had tech and performance on the 13th. We were in tech all morning. The cast was really, really cool. Not only the day rehearse for the five hours that they were there and what little time we were able to squeeze in tech, but then they constantly were working on the piece during the off hours when we were at the theater. And I'm so thankful for just their love and their care and just pushing themselves for this piece. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better better team of five you know in that moment I got to watch the show twice I got to introduce my show I got to meet people who I've talked to with online Brendan came to see my show from Wait in the Wings if you have been following along on here Brendan has been really supportive of my process and I was actually able to invite him and pay for his ticket the fun home video was so and the superbia video have been so influential to my writing process and he mentioned you know like when your script is done send it over and I emailed him out of the blue and I was like, hey, I can do you one better. Come and see its first performance ever. And so he was able to come out. All of these amazing Twitter mutuals who I've been talking with online for, you know, a year or two. I was able to meet in person. Friends who I hadn't seen since I was in high school were able to come out. And it was this celebration and really, and I want to be honest here, like a moment of full circle and almost like, this is so weird, but almost like stepping into myself. I've really struggled with the writing process as of late, but in particular because writing is a solitary experience, especially when you're writing a musical by yourself. And so for a long time, it feels like you have nothing, nothing but a dream and nothing but some endless final draft files on your computer and demos, but really nothing to say, hey, I am doing this, I have written this. And my performance at the lab and seeing these characters come to life and being able to share that with the 150 people that came over the two performances really showed me that I do have something, something valuable and something that I'm proud of, but more importantly, something real. I can, I can point to this and be like, hey, this is me. <laughs> This is my work. And while it's not done yet, here's what I've been working on. And it's no longer fiction or fantasy or just, you know, endless pages. And for that, I'm so thankful for the lab, for choosing me and for uplifting people just like me who are trying to write. Let's jump into the final section because that timeline section went on too long. But 
you know, it was three months of timeline. Let's talk about the future, the future of CCL. The piece currently is unfinished. As I have mentioned, there is a draft, but it's not functional. There are about half the songs are written. With that in mind, the show is going to be done at least my thought is that it's going to be done by the end of the summer. I'm not trying to put a specific date on it so that people won't kill me if I don't do that, but I it, it will be done with the summer with act one hopefully being done at the end of April. I need to fast draft this. I have a final outline of the show and I think I'm finally starting to reach the end in terms of like, here are all the beats. Here is everything I need to write. And now it's actually about writing it and piecing it together. And the thing about being an intense plotter is that a lot of your time is spent plotting. But once you have what you need, you can write shit really fast. Hence why I was able to write 15 pages of performance caliber in 10 days because I knew what I needed to write and I knew what the beats needed to be and that allowed for just the creative juices to flow. With that in mind, End of Play starts on the first, which is the Dramatist Guild event of writing a musical in a month. I did it last year and drafted about half the show's score. A lot of those songs I'm actually reusing and putting in different places, which will be interesting. But I'm going back in and I'm going to finish writing act one this month. So I'm going to be writing every day. If you've made it all the way up to this point, thank you for listening. If you have any questions about the process, I'm more than happy to talk about it with you. If it's something that I can't answer, I will email the lab and get in contact with them. If you are a Latino person, a Latina person, a Latina person, join the lab. Join the lab. Thank you all so much for watching. Never stop making theater. The light really wants to kill me. And with that, I will see everyone with another long ass video next month. Join End of Play. Let's write a musical together. Bye. Follow me on TikTok as I'll be vlogging there daily.